Magandang umaga po muli sa ating lahat. Ito po ang yung lingkod, Pastor Maricar ng 611 Bread of Life Manila. At nagagalak po ako na makasama po muli kayo sa ating pagbubulay-bulay ng salita ng Panginoon sa ating bread and breakfast. So ngayon po ay isa na naman pong pasimula para po sa atin. Dahil muli po tayo magsimula in another book sa Bible. And this is in the Old Testament and it is in the book of Numbers. Now, this book is very important because we just don't see numbers. Madalas po, when we study our Bibles or we preach the, the Word of God, no, minsan po, ay, we miss out or minsan nilalagtawan po natin ng numbers dahil ito po ay punong-puno ng mahaba na mga statement at madalas po, ay puro numero ang ating nakikita po dito. But I know that as God has included this book in His Blessed Bible, I believe that God has in store for us and God has a message po sa bawat isa sa atin. Especially now that we are in our GCQ at narito pa rin po tayo sa uh, kalagitnaan ng ating pakikibaka in our fight in the crisis that we are in. We believe that uh, God will also be with us and His presence is with us. Tulad po ng kanyang presensya, tulad din po ng kanyang pagsama sa kanyang mga anak. In the time when the people of Israel just came out from their slavery and they have to go through 40 years in the wilderness. At alam po natin that after the wilderness is the promised land. Alam po natin that after the 40 years that they have went through some wilderness in the desert, I, at the end, God has fulfilled His promise. God has given them the promise that they have given them from the very beginning. And God led them to this green pasture and the blessed land of Canaan. And I believe, maging po sa ating buhay, we are like the Israelites ngayon. We are walking and living in the wilderness of our lives. But we know and we believe that after this time, God is going to revive the land. God will revive the world and His people and He's going to restore us and lead us guide us through the promise of abundance, abundant life, abundant future for each one of us. But we know that for us to be able to experience and reach this place or this position in our lives, we have and we need the very presence of God. At yan po ang makikita natin sa pasimula ng ating pag-aaral sa umagang ito in Numbers chapter 1. At makita po natin dito na nagsimula ang chapter na ito and it says here, The Lord spoke to Moses in the tent of meeting in the desert of Sinai on the first day of the second month of the second year after the Israelites came out of Egypt. So ito po yung unang-unang salita dito. It was God who spoke to Moses. It is God himself who revealed himself to Moses and the people of Israel. And he himself just spoke these words. At saan po niya kinausap si Moses? It was in the tent of meeting. Now, the tent of meeting signifies where the, where the people gather before God whenever they want to receive, whenever they want to commune with God. It is to be in the tent of meeting. They have to come on the tabernacle of God specifically in the tent of meeting. This is how far they can go. The, the whole people except the high priest who can get in to the holy of holies. Pero sila po, lahat ng tao, they have to gather in the tent of meeting. At makita po natin that this chapter began with this tent of meeting and it ended also in the covenant place ng, ng Panginoon, the tabernacle in verse 53. At dito po natin makikita how important it is ang presence ng Panginoon in the travel, in their journey towards 
the promised land in the very wilderness that they were in during this time they really need the presence of God and the presence of God was also with them and it was God's presence who lead them and who guided them all throughout this time imagine you know leading more than 1 million people in the wilderness you know they don't have much they don't have the the security wala po silang daladala when they were slaves from Egypt wala po silang i mean wala po silang mga teknolohiya and they have to go through this great journey towards the Canaan and we know that it will not be easy without the presence of God it will not be easy but we thank God in Numbers chapter 1 because it says here that God was with them and where was God in the tabernacle that's why it's always in the tabernacle of God that he speaks to men at sabi po dito, it was during the first day of the second month of the second year of the Israelites na kung saan po galing po sila sa Egypt. Bakit po the second year? It is because in the first year, God has established first yung tabernacle po niya. Because it is, God knows how important it is for the Israelites to have His presence and also for the Israelites to walk with God. Kaya naman po in the first years, it was the, the tabernacle that has been built by the people. So that in the second year, God was able to dwell with them. God's presence was with them, walking with them, leading them. It was when the presence of God walks before them that they begin to also journey towards the promised land. And so our title for today is that we need to seek God's presence in our wilderness, like where we are right now. I believe that it is not man, it is not the intelligence of man that will deliver us. But it is the grace of God and the very presence of God that is walking with us throughout this wilderness na meron po tayo at naniniwala po tayo that God has been with us. Even in the church, we have experienced a lot of testimonies, a lot of miracles. And we know, especially in our church in 611, we haven't contacted with the virus and God has been protecting us, even our jobs, God has been sustaining us all throughout. So we believe like the Israelites, even if we are in the very midst of our wilderness, God's presence is with us. And brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you and to remind you, this is how important the presence of God in our lives, in whatever situation, in whatever place that we are in, we are in. when the presence of God is with you. No one, nothing can stand against you and nothing can destroy us. But it, it is because the presence of God will continue to protect us and sustain us. So in here, the first paragraph is in verse 1 to verse 19. And the point one is God leads his people. It is God himself that spoke to Moses. Lahat po ng sinabi po dito, he spoke to Moses. And so the Lord says, Take a census of the whole Israelite community, verse 2, by their clans and families, listing every man by name, one by one. You and Aaron are to count according to their divisions all the men in Israel who are 20 years old or more and able to serve in the army. One man from each tribe, each them, the head of his family is to help you. These are the names of the men who are to assist you. Now, God knows that it will not be easy for one man like Moses or even Moses as a leader and Aaron as a priest to lead the whole like more than a million people in the wilderness. At alam po naman natin, these people are really stiff-necked. And so it was God who really led them. He used Moses, but it was actually God himself who led his people. At siya po mismo nag-instruct. And it was him who gave Moses the instructions, the strategies on how he can lead these people. So one of the strategies is that God wants to count every man 20 years old or more and able to serve in the army. Why? Isa po sa pinaka-importanteng mga bagay on those times was security. It is because the people of Israel has to travel. Now, if you break the security, at wala po yung security, every plan that you have, yung journey po ninyo, sigurado pong maubos sila. So God knows, you know, will not just be there 
to protect but he will always walk with his man he will always work with us you know every goal everything that god is going to do he will always ask the help of man he, not the help but he will always need the cooperation of man at ito po ay isang grace na makikita po natin kung paano niya nilid si Moses is that God used people God used uh, God gave Moses yung katulungan yung help and sabi po niya dito for Moses to begin with to begin this work in verse 4 kailangan po ni Moses na mag kailangan po ni Moses ng mga leaders and these great leaders who are already leaders of their household, head of their family. Okay? So, hindi po sila basta-basta. Because they are able men. They ca because they are really a man of valor, man of righteousness. And the most important thing is that they were chosen by God. They were appointed by God. And in here, God starts to name them. Sabi po nito, Reuben, verse, verse 6, verse 5 to verse 15. Unti-unti po na pinangalanan ng Panginoon itong mga tribe leaders na ito. And that they were really chosen by God, not by men. You know, and I believe this is also what God is saying to the church. Sabi po dito in verse 16, These were the men appointed from the community, the leaders of their ancestral tribes. They were the heads of the clans of Israel. Verse 17, Moses and Aaron took these men whose names had been specified and they called the whole community together on the first day of the second month. And so, ito po, it is God Himself who appointed, who had chosen sila po yung mga pinili ng Panginoon. Sabi po dito in verse 16, these were the men appointed. They were God's appointed people. And ito po yung isang leading ng Painon kung, gani, kung paano po na tinulungan si Moses. God gave him help. Who will stand with him, who will walk with him, who will assist him in every way. And I believe this is also how God calls us, calls his leaders today. And when God called you and God put you as a leader in the church, you know, I believe that you were chosen. You are chosen. Because in the church, we don't practice democracy. You know, it, it's not the people who has chosen these people. Hindi po sila nagbotohan. And then they said, okay, this is who we choose. But in the church, we believe that whatever and whoever leader is being appointed, it is appointment of God. No, especially with pastors. We need to be encouraged that... You know, you need not to doubt your appointment from God. That you are chosen to lead that church. You no, know, also as a parent, you are chosen as a parent. Because authorities comes from church. Authorities comes from God. And authority, you know, it is God who chose it. No matter how wicked we are maybe, no matter how incapable we are, but God will truly will use us and raise us up. No matter how we think, you know, minsan makita natin that the church members are stronger than us maybe, or we are being intimidated, or we have very low self-esteem. But today, you need to be encouraged that you are God's chosen people. God has appointed you in that place because God has given you the vision. God will use you mightily, not on your own strength, not because you are able, but because He is an able God. Okay, no matter what kind of wilderness, no matter what kind of difficulty you may face or you may walk or trudge into, God will be with you. And as long as God's presence is with you, He will enable you, He will allow you to break through and to, to reach the vision that He has given you. And like in this verse, God will lead you. As He has chosen you, God will also go ahead and before you and He will prepare everything for you. Just like how He prepared and gave Moses the leaders, you know, and I believe these are people that are very capable because God Himself chose them. And so, this is how God led them. The presence of God was with the people of Israel through the leaders that He has also appointed. So I know that, you know, in every organization, in the church, in, in the family, in our workplaces, we have leaders. And no matter who they are, no matter what they are, and how, 
you know, minsan po, marami po din silang mga weaknesses at pagkakamali. But we have to honor them, we have to, to follow them because we believe that God has appointed them. And that God will use them for our benefit. God will use them to lead us. And that God will show His presence through them. And our authorities is a God-given blessing. And that through them, the presence of God will lead us. Amen. And the second point is in verse 20. Verse 20 to 46. Okay. Verse 20 to 46. And these are all census. Okay. And we, we see the excitement among the Israelites during this time because they have to come before Moses and they have to put their names, present themselves, especially if they are 20 and above and they are capable for fighting. So the second point is fight the battle and enter our promised land. Now for us to be able to reach the calling and to reach the vision that God has given us, we have we have to enter into a battle. Okay? Because we know as Christians, as Christians, every day is a battle. Amen. Though we know that God is fighting for us, but we also have to rise up, to stand in our ground and to face the battle. Amen. Tulad po ng mga Israelite during this time, sabi po dito, ang inulit-ulit po na sinabi po dito, all men 20 years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name one by one according to the records of their clans and families. So, ito po yung isa sa naging strategy ng Panginoon and God raised up his people from his slavery they become the mighty soldiers of God God breathed through them and God chose them to become a mighty man of valor to become fighters of God and warriors of God you see God changed and restored their identity from a, being a slave to become soldiers of God to be fighters of God and this is something that that we see we thank God in, in in numbers because you know this is the grace of God God numbered his people that means he count them in he gave he gave them grace they are no longer slave they're, they're no longer just people who are following God but God raised them up even their self-esteem even even po yung, yung, yung spiritual lives nila, God gave them this opportunity and God gave them grace to count them in, in the great call and in the great uh, work, a mighty work of God. At dito po, lahat po from the people and tribe of Reuben down to the descendants of Naphtali, everyone has been numbered. And I believe this is also the grace of God in also in our time today in our wilderness I believe that God is calling each one of us God is God will going to use us mightily even in the wilderness Amen no, Ano man po yung, yung weaknesses natin Ano man po yung, yung naging past po natin Hindi po imposible sa Panginoon Na tayo ay ma-raise up po niya Para po sa kanyang glory And like the Israelites You know, He will raise us up He will give us the courage and the ability To fight our battles But we have to stand up We have to enter into the battlefield We have to prepare ourselves How we... we physically spiritually we have to be prepared amen because we know that we are battling not just in in not just through flesh and blood not just the the things that we see in the world but because of the powers of the dark world against the powers and authorities of the dark world so physically and spiritually we have to prepare ourselves and enter into the battle because we know that God is also with us when we come into the battle God will go ahead of us and he's going to be with us in the battle and he will never leave nor forsake us and you see, every clan, every part of the family, you know, someone must be there to represent the family. That means even in our time, ngayon, every family needs a priest. Every family needs a Christian, needs someone to pray for them, to, to fight for them, to have this great courage and faith that the family will be saved, the family will be restored by God. But 
someone must need to stand before God. Someone must represent God in the family. Amen. It's not enough that we come to church. It's not enough that we know that that we are a Christian. But we need to know that our priestly calling. We need to know that we are the warriors in our family. And to lead the family towards this mighty call, towards the promised land that we are in. So we have you are chosen. Every one of us here, God is counting us in. God is going to use you mightily in the wilderness that we are right now. Whether it be your company, no matter how small is your is, is your work in your company, know for a fact that your presence as a Christian in your family, it, it plays a big role so that your company will be blessed. So that your company can fight a good fight of faith. And we know that God will honor His people in the place because you carry the presence of God. Amen. When we fight our battles, we are not fighting on our own. But we have God's presence with us. But we have to enter the battle. And so we know that we shall receive the promise of God. And the last point is in verse 47 down to the last verses up to verse 54. Levites must cultivate the presence of God. So sabi po dito, in, after everyone is being numbered and sent, nakuha po yung census ng lahat ng mga tribe, verse 47 says, The ancestral tribe of the Levites, however, was not counted along with the others. The Lord had said to Moses, You must not count the tribe of Levi or include them in the census of the other Israelites. Instead, appoint the Levites to be in charge of the tabernacle of the covenant law over all its furnishings and everything belonging to it. They are to carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings. They are to take care of it and encamp around it. Whenever the tabernacle is to move, the Levites are to take it down. And whenever the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites shall do it. Anyone else who approaches it is to be put to death. The Israelites are to set up their tents by the visions, each of them in their own camp under their Standards. The Levites, however, are to set up their tents around the tabernacle of the covenant law so that my wrath will not fall on the Israelite community. The Levites are to be is the Levites are to be responsible for the care of the tabernacle of the covenant of law. So ito po ang 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 calling ng mga Levites. During the time of Numbers and in the census, they were not counted. Why? Because the Levites belong to God. They belong to the Lord. All their lives, their commitment, everything that they do, it's all for God, not for war. But the, the Israelites are God's chosen people to take care of the furnishings, to carry the the the, the covenant of the law they have to remove everything whenever they move they have to put up and pitch the tent every time they have to 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 encamp and this is the very work of the levites they have to take care of the tabernacle and the tabernacle of god signifies the very presence of the lord and so that we need to understand that this is the work of the levites we have to cultivate we have to nourish we have to maintain the very presence of god in the wilderness very presence of god in the midst of his people because it is the presence of god that sustains them it is the presence of god who will uh, save them from any danger from any calamity or crisis that they may be facing just like today you know the levites the pastors the priests of this time are very very important because they play a very big role that the presence of god will not leave his his people especially in this time of pandemic and what does the levites do maliban pa po sa kanilang pagse-serve sa panginoon maliban na lamang maliban po sa pagme-maintain ng presence ng panginoon their work is to be the mediator you know they work they have to pitch their tent no in the middle of the camp of the people and 
the very tabernacle because the tabernacle of God was the very center of their camp during that time. And surrounding the center in the middle are the Levites. They are there to encamp. And also next is the outer outer circle which is composed by the tribes. You know, every tribe in the east, meron pong tagabantay dun. And there are three tribes, you know, na, na nagbabantay every corner, every side ng kampo nila. But the Levites has to be the center. Why? Because the Levites has to become the mediator and intercessor. Intercede for the people before God. And that they have to speak for God in behalf of the people or to the people. So ito po yung work nila is very crucial because they are the ones who are maintaining the presence of God at the same time they are the ones who has to take care of the people of Israel at makikita po natin dito that through them, through their intercession, through their mediation, man is being reconciled, man is being communed with God that's why man was able to dwell with God and God was able to dwell in their needs. It is because of the Levites. You know, that's why the Levites has to maintain their holiness. They have to be maintained clean because they are the only ones who can serve the Lord during those times and who could really come near God's presence during this time. And so, ito po yung naging work po nila. So, they have to maintain the presence of God. And I believe even in our time today, this is our work as a Levites. That's why no matter what happens, magsaraman po ang physical doors ng church. We continue to have our bread and breakfast. We continue to have our morning devotion because this is our one way as a priest, as a Levite, to maintain the lamp. The lamp is the word. The lamp is the very presence of God that we need it from morning till night. Kaya naman po, every morning we have our bread and breakfast and we continue to persist no matter what is the struggle the church may be struggling right now you know we cannot stop but because this is our calling we have to do our responsibility because this is our calling God will use us God will help us God will be with us as we continue to serve him and so Levites pastors cell leaders be encouraged you have a great role in this time of crisis, the presence of God has to be maintained in your cell group, in your, in your very churches. Because God has called you. Like the Levites, he, he will raise you up for a very special role. And this is to be God's people, to be God's mediator, to be God's servants. And as we continue to maintain His presence in this very time, we know that the people will continue to be connected with God and God will continue to dwell to His people. So this is Numbers chapter 1. Brothers and sisters, we need the presence of God in the very time, in the very midst of crisis that we are in. But we need to understand as He leads us, we need to rise up, follow Him, enter into the promise that He has given us. Fight the battle. Fight a good fight of faith. And we need to maintain His very presence. Nurture the very presence of God in our lives. We have to eat His Word every day. We have to always intercede. We need to always maintain our spiritual health that we can be able to fight a good fight of faith. In, in this time today and we know we shall have victory amen if the israelites it took them 40 years no matter how it takes us how long it will take us we have to enter our battles and have to fight a good fight of faith god bless everyone and so i just want to pray for you father we thank you that we know that your promise of your presence for us is with us, Panginoon. And we know that we have the Shekinah glory of God, the dwelling presence of God in our lives. At alam po namin, hindi mo kami kailanman iiwan. And so, Lord God, in this very special time that we are in, in this struggle, whatever crisis that we are in right now, Father, we just ask for your presence to dwell with us, lead us, and guide us, Panginoon. And may you also raise us up as leaders and priests of our time that we can be able to be used 
by you raise up by you father god for the mighty works we also pray for us as your leaders and priests god that as you have called us to wherever we are right now i pray that you raise us up father to be your mighty man of valor to become the priest God, to maintain your presence, to lead your people in righteousness. At hayaan mo, Panginoon, na we can be of great help to the church, to the leadership, Panginoon, na ano man po, uh, sino man po kami sa church. We may be a, a member, ordinary member, but we know that we have we have a place in the church. We have a responsibility, a duty in this time of crisis. So Lord, I, we thank you that you count us in and you believe in us, Father. And it's such a mercy and a grace, Panginoon, na patuloy niyo po kami na magamit even in this time, Panginoon. Whatever is our limitation, like the Israelites, they don't have much. But God, they were able to do their part because you enabled them. So Lord, I pray that you also anoint us and help us to see where you have called us, Panginoon, at Pagtuloy po namin na magamit, magpagamit din, Panginoon, para sa iyong vineyard. Father, we thank you. I bless everyone. Remember them. Bless everyone who is watching right now. May you provide all their needs. Let your promotion, your comfort, and your very presence dwell among them. Lead them, Lord. I bless them. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, yan po. Dito po nagtatapos ang ating sharing and we pray that we can have you tomorrow and that you can join us as we continue to light the lamp and receive and maintain the presence of God in our lives. God bless po and see you tomorrow.